Hey guys, David Nuno here, TechSags uh, Rewind. I almost called it TechSags Idol, Luke Evangelist here. We, I guess we have to have like a, a conversation with Nick because his temper today on the show, um, how, how do you describe it? It was a bit much. A little, a little um, much. Yeah. He really came hard to Tyler yeah, he for did. something that I don't think is Tyler's fault. Maybe yeah. Tyler has a lot of family that has access to internet. I'm, I'm not really quick to judge anybody, so I'm going to give Tyler the benefit of the doubt. Well, I'm quick to judge. I judge immediately. I can change my mind immediately, too, but I, I'm, right now I'm judging you watching me right now. Uh, so the, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, we did Texas Idol today. It's your chance to try out for the fan show. Tyler won, and Nick just felt like he got too many votes. He, didn't he like rigged it. the election. He didn't rig the election. He rigged the election. Did he not win on merit? He rigged the election. Now we're storming the cat. I'm just kidding. We're not Whoa, doing my that. Gosh. <laughs> we're, we're not doing that. We're All not right, doing that. Olin. Let's All settle right. down. Yeah. Hey, uh, what was on the show today, Nicholas? Well, uh, the go hour with uh, OB, like you said, Bronny was on there talking about Weston Davis, newest offensive lineman commit. Aggie recruiting is just rolling right now. Mr. College Football, Tony Barnhart, stopped by a little College World Series recap with Kendall Rogers and uh, Adam Brenneman, ESPN College Football analyst, and does all kinds of different things. Uh, on social media, David, good get there. Uh, all that and more on the rewind. That was pretty good. Like you know, if I, I would probably vote for him, and I would allow his family to vote for him to be the host of the show, but he would probably cancel himself. Yeah, he could have my job. He kind of does. Six X rewind. Let's talk about Weston Davis, Ronnie. How did they get it done? Uh, through Steve Adazio, really, in the connections that that Weston had made, and uh, I feel like the the comfortability, comfortability level of, of Weston and his family in College Station is something that, uh, you know, I was told that the family just felt like College Station and A&M was the best fit for Weston in his future. And, and I think that uh, the job of recruiting not only by the coaching staff, but the current players, the current commits, Dalen Evans had been on Weston Davis for a long time. Uh, Bryce Anderson is another kid that has been just really influential in all these recruitments out of Southeast Texas, uh, specifically with you know, Weston Davis, a kid from Beaumont. And, you know, they've also really hard after Draylon Miller at Silsby and Ty Anthony Smith at Jasper. And Bryce Anderson has played a, a really important role for the Aggies in both of those as well. So it's kind of weird whenever you go and you do this recruiting stuff. And, you know, in the moment we knew how big of a recruiting win Bryce Anderson was over Texas, but you just just never know which ones are going to be paying dividends down the road. And winning that battle against Texas a couple of years ago for Bryce uh, is, is certainly you know paying A and M back on the field and off the field still. Uh, Bronny, what ma- what is it about Weston Davis that makes him such a you know a, a valued com- commodity? He checks every box for an elite offensive tackle prospect, right? Six foot six, 275, 280 pounds, great wingspan, giant, enormous hands. Um, all the stuff that they're going to measure at the NFL Combine, Weston Davis is going to do in spades. He can really move. He's extremely light on his feet. Uh, a lot of people may not know it. He's a dual sport athlete. He's a uh, plays and plays a lot for Beaumont United's basketball team, which is not only one of the best in the state of Texas, but one of the best in the country. I mean, they were back-to-back state champions and then finished in the runner-up spot last year. Georgia, can they be the first team since the 1930s to win a third straight national championship? Can is yes, of course they can. But how hard will it be considering it hasn't been done and the, the turnover? Well, it, it's always hard to do when something hasn't been done because you, know, you, you there are certain mental pressures that come to bear. But I, I gave a talk to a group Thursday night. It was, it was a group of Georgia uh, alumni. Uh, from the business school, and and they asked me the same question. I said, here's the thing about it. The, the odds are certainly against you winning three in a row just by just laws of physics. And it's just it's – just but you sit there and you look at the Georgia schedule and you say, okay, I get that, but who's going to beat them? I mean, because Georgia's got a lot of really good players. And they've recruited exceedingly well the last five years under Kirby Smart. So I, I do think it's possible. The big, the big game that everybody's pointing to is Georgia going to Tennessee on November 18th. If Tennessee puts together a big year, then that's going to be an incredible atmosphere uh, in Knoxville. So can Georgia do it? Yeah. And will they do it? I'm, you know, I'm kind of leaning in that direction right now. So speaking of Tennessee, I'm not – 
high on Joe Milton, but I'm not low on him either. I think it's kind of like a to be determined. Even though he has played, where are you when it comes to Joe Milton and leading the uh, the Vols? I had this conversation with somebody who follows the team very, very closely. I said, Josh Heupel's offense is very, very sophisticated. The quarterback has to throw a lot of different throws. It's not just the deep ball. It's not, not, and so you've got to be able to throw the ball with touch. Now, Joe Milton has a cannon for an arm. I talked to a guy the other day, said he, in one of these workouts, he actually threw the ball 85 yards on the fly. And so he's got the strength arm, but can he make all the throws that Josh Heupel wants him to make? And that's to be seen. What I was told is he can do it, but he has a trouble. He has trouble doing it consistently. If you would have told me that LSU was going to win the College World Series before the season started, I would have believed you. But then there was a little blip during the season where I was like, I don't know if they got they can do it beyond Paul Skeens. Well, they did it, and they did it without Paul yesterday. No, no doubt. I think it was actually fitting for this team to actually win the national championship without using Paul Skeens in the final series. You know, I think for. All you know, all season long, people said, "Oh, you know, and, and, and valid, right?" I mean, we saw this team in College Station, uh, we saw this team other weekends, and it felt like, really, outside of Paul, for much of the season, you were wondering, like, do they have enough pitching to win a national championship? And the answer was yes. You know, Thatcher Hurd stepped up for him. Riley Cooper, you know, you know, gave up I think one run of what nine and two thirds out of the bullpen uh, here in Omaha. They had guys like Griffin Herring step up. Ty Floyd, you know, struck out seventeen here at the College World Series. And so they had guys step up. But, you know, I, I give LSU a ton of credit for a, a program that people just go, well, I mean, they, they bought their championship. Well, not really. I mean, yeah, they went out and got, uh, you know, three superstars out of the portal. But let's not forget, Dylan Cruz is developed in this program, recruited by Nolan Kane, by the way. Kay Beloso recruited, was developed in this program, recruited by Nolan Kane. So all these guys were, for the most part, uh, other than Tommy White, you know, and Paul Skeens and Patrick Hurd, they were recruited by Nolan Payne to go to LSU. So these are kids that just developed in this program. And, uh, you know, when the, when the lights came on in this college series, you know, Skeens was great. But, like, who else was really good? Jordan Thompson stepped up last night. Uh, he's a guy that could have very easily left. Gavin Dugas was a kid that was rumored to be portaling out last year because, you know, there were, you know, he people didn't think he would be starting. Kay Beloso had an injury, could have easily portaled out, you know, thinking he might not get as much playing time. He stuck with it, and he ended up being one of the heroes here in Omaha. So for, for all the stories, I just think with this LSU team of high expectations, you know, they're the quote-unquote portal kings. A lot of the kids that they developed are actually the ones who got it done here. So I know you had a, a series recently, five surprising teams that could win their conference, and you put Texas A&M as one of those teams. Give me your reasons kind of behind it, why, why you are potentially high on A&M. I mean, I think a, a few reasons. Obviously, last season was, was disappointing, but there's so much talent in College Station that at some point it's got to come together, right? At some point, the, the, the talent has to – has to come together. The, the number one thing I see when, when I look at A&M right now is I, I believe, although it, was, although it was a controversial hire, I think Bobby Petrino coming in uh, as the OC is the right pick. And I think it's going to revamp that offense and give it the kind of give it the, um, the new, new life it needs. You know, you look at what Petrino did at Arkansas, at Louisville, and, and now the players he has to work with, way more talent than he had at Arkansas and Louisville. Uh, the, the ability to, to score fast, to play fast, to throw the ball over the yard. I think that offense uh, will, will be the differentiator for Texas a and I'm excited to see what Petrino does. Again, it was a controversial hire. I mean, when I first saw it, I was like, Bobby Petrino's going to A&M? Um, but I, I'm, I'm excited to see, to see how it all plays out. I understood why, because I think even here locally, when it first came out, like when it first was, you know, reported by Billy Lucci that it was a possibility. I'm like, but then the more investigation I did into it, the more conversations I had, you can talk yourself in and out of stuff. But I think it really makes yeah. sense for Jimbo to bring in a guy that he will believe in. Because if he brought in a young guy, no he's going to take over, right? It's a great point. It's a great point. I mean, especially knowing how involved Jimbo wants to be in that, in that side of the ball, right? I mean, it, it's hard to take the hands off it if you're the head coach. To bring in a guy who's seen so much football – arguably seen just as much or more football than Jimbo uh, is, is a, is a great hire. And I think it's a guy that players will respect right away that that's coached so many great players, um, you know, and then, and then you see what Connor can do at quarterback. I think that, I think that that fit there for, for 
uh, Bobby Petrino is going to be really good for what he wants to do in his offense. Um, and I think even, even the receiver, um, uh, Smith, the, the Smith kid who missed a lot of last season, like, I think he's going to have a great year. Luke, tell the people what to do. Okay, what you're going to want to do, very complex instructions here. Get a piece of paper if you have one. Like, yep. comment, yep. subscribe, yep. tell your friends, yep. share, yep. have a great rest of your day, yep. and follow Tech Sags on all social medias. As a matter of fact, Tyler's family, go ahead and rig up a bot to like and comment on this video about a million times, and maybe watch it too. This is the best part of this whole thing. Tyler will be here in the studio <laughs> I know. on Thursday, and I've been told he also does jujitsu on the side, <laughs> and I can't wait till he kicks your... <laughs> See you next time.